These days, you don't have to look far to find gloom and doom. Global warming, soaring fuel and food prices, and on and on it goes. But I've managed to find a tiny glimmer of hope, a community that's beating the 21st century blues, a place that gives people power a whole new meaning. There are no electricity or water bills. They grow their own food and recycle everything. They've simply unplugged. Once it was dismissed as just a hippie, trippy dream. Now it's a great practical idea that's spreading around the world. And the good news is, it's painless. The good life with all creature comforts intact. Taos, New Mexico. Where the Rio Grande carves its way through as harsh a landscape as you'll find anywhere. Yeah. Out here in the desert, they're building homes that could change the way we live, how we eat, where we sleep, how we survive. We can make a home, make its own electricity, harvest its own water, contain and treat its own sewage, uh, heat and cool itself, use byproducts of the world, uh, produce food anywhere. And we can put a family of four in there and they don't need to do anything. Mike Reynolds is an architect who builds what he calls earthships. Totally self-sufficient homes out of garbage. Tires, beer cans, bottles, all the leftovers from an affluent society are put to good use. Mike Reynolds has been doing this for 35 years, and now he's built a whole town from trash. You must have known you had a difficult message to sell. Yes, if you're gonna hold up a piece of garbage and tell people it's gold, you know, you, got, you better be prepared for some flack. <laughs> And everybody called me a fool and called me a fool and called me a fool. And now recycling's the thing to do, you know. This is an amazing achievement. It comes at a time when we're struggling to deal with the effects of climate change. Restricted water, rising fuel and power costs, even maintaining basic food supplies. We're not necessarily looking at trying to change the planet as much as trying to make it so more people can survive. Because things, things are changing, regardless of whether we want to accept it. I don't care if they accept change or not. I don't care if they accept global warming or what they call it or who caused it. I don't care about any of that. I care about how do we live through it. And that's what our ships are about, is living through it. This is pretty tough country. Scorching heat in the summer, below freezing and snow in the winter, and only about eight inches of rain every year. So if you can live off the grid out here, that is, not be connected to the power, the water, or the sewer, you're doing pretty well. From the outside, these houses may not be everybody's cup of tea. But step inside, and you may be pleasantly surprised. It looks hostile from the outside, but it's very comfortable on the inside. Oh, this is just a warm, um, bright, comfortable space. Kirsten Jacobson built this house herself. These are tires. There's tires all back in here, and then um, plants, the whole building, all the electricity in the building is from solar cells on the roof. Um, you can have a windmill as well, but I just have three solar panels on the roof that provide electricity for lights, um, TV, internet, phone, everything you, you really You're need. missing out on nothing. I, I, don't, I don't believe so. Um, I'm missing out on not paying a utility bill. Her home is warm in winter and cool in summer. And her only water is rainwater. Now this is almost like a tropical rainforest. I know, and in the high mountain desert where we get very little rain um, and it's very cold in the winter we have banana trees inside the house so all my shower water and sink water waters these plants and they thrive and they use up some of the water 
but they also aerate and treat the water and then they flush the toilet with that water. Okay, so it's one big cycle of water. Right. All the water is used four times in the building instead of just once. And so we take eight inches of rain and multiply it times four. That's how we're able to live just off the catch water. And if we can do it here, we can do it almost anywhere in the world. Mike Reynolds is constantly working on his designs. The Phoenix is his biggest project yet. Out the back, you can see how these houses are put together. This is the like the tire I was pounding up there. Yeah. This is how hard they get, see? And they're swollen up, mm. and they're resilient. It's getting rid of something that we have mountains of that we don't know what to do with, and it's low tech. And this material is indigenous to the entire... Rebels like Mike Reynolds have become the voice of reason for a desperate planet. You were laughed at, were, were you not, when you told your architectural colleagues? I, well, I was more than laughed at. They said I was a disgrace to the architectural community. And since then, I've heard that many times. <laughs> that was just the first time. You yeah, that's just the beginning. <laughs> it must have irked you so many times, having to, having to, you know... Refrain from killing people? Yeah. <laughs> But now, Reynolds' homes are being built around the world. And this would sit well in any place, in any community in the world. It wouldn't look out of place. Oh, it would look out of place. Yeah, my form of beauty is not necessarily globally accepted. <laughs> but in Holland, I'm making it brick. In Scotland, I made it stone. Uh, in Jamaica, I'm making it with verandas. and. So I'm, I'm making it palatable. I'm starting to wise up onto that, that, that no matter how good something is, people will die before they'll use it. For years, Mike Reynolds was regarded as a hippie architect gone mad. Now his time has come. He still may be a hippie, but no one thinks he's mad anymore. Eternal greenery? Yeah, that's, the, that's cleaning up your bathwater. <laughs> I knew that it would happen. I mean, in uh, because you could see it. You could see it 35 years ago. And now it's needed. So we're, you know, we're confident. We can do anything, anywhere. You know, we're even cocky. 